Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a very highly anticipated and very highly requested video, and that is none other than my 2018 bookshelf tour. If you hadn't noticed, I recently got two new bookshelves, and I posted about them on Instagram, and everyone kept asking me for a bookshelf tour, and of course I was going to do one, especially because it's the beginning of the new year, and today I'm finally filming that video. Since this is going to be an incredibly long video to begin with, I really don't want to make this intro any longer than it needs to be, but I do just want to answer a couple of questions that I know I'm going to get in the comments. First of all, my bookshelves are the Ikea Billy bookshelves in white. I have four of the regular ones, and then one of the smaller corner ones. If you're wondering how I organize my books, I organize them by genre and then kind of just what's aesthetically pleasing to me, so there's no other real rhyme or reason to it. This is just what I like. And then second, if you're wondering how many books are on my bookshelves, I have 462 books. I think that's just about everything I wanted to say in this intro, and for the sake of keeping this video as short as we possibly can, let's just get into the bookshelf tour. <music> So starting off the bookshelf tour, this is my very first bookshelf and the very top shelf are all of my classics. I do have a second classic shelf, but this is the one where I keep all of my like special editions. First up, I have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Mansfield Park, and Pride and Prejudice, all by Jane Austen, Anna Karenina and War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, Heidi by Joanna Spirey, a Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery, and on top of all those books I have my Prom Queen Crown, A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, another copy of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, The Great Cases of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, The Great Gadsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, Snow White by the Brothers Grimm and illustrated by Camille Rose Garcia, another edition of Emma by Jane Austen, a second edition of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, The Wizard of Oz and Other Stories by Frank Bond, and lastly Dubliners by James Joyce. Moving on to the next shelf, this is one of my favorite fantasy series shelves as well as my Victoria Schwab shelf. First up on this shelf I have An Ember in the Ashes and A Torch Against the Night by Sapa Tahir. Next I have The Diviners, Layer of Dreams and Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. The Final Empire, The Well of Ascension and the Hero of Ages in the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Then moving on to all of my Victoria Schwab books, I have The Monsters of Verity duology, Vicious, The Collector's Edition of A Darker Shade of Magic, and lastly, the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy, all by Victoria Schwab. Moving down to the third shelf on this bookshelf, I have one of my Shadowhunters shelves. This one has all of my Mortal Instruments books, and then all of the merch and just little knickknacks and items that I have that are Shadowhunter themed. Starting off with the items on this shelf, I first have this Geeky Clean Nephilim candle, which smells really, really good. Next, I have my Morgenstern ring that I got a very, very long time ago. This is from Hevel Design, the jewelry store, and I'll leave a link to their website in the description box because I do actually have a few items from them. Next, on top of my books, I just have these two little tins that some of my jewelry from Hevel Design came in, so I just keep them up there because I think they're nice. Next, I have this Angelic Rune pin that I got from BookCon 2017, and then I also have this other rune pin, and I forget which room this one is. I feel like it's either the friendship one or the parabatai one, but I can't remember exactly. Next, I have Isabel's ruby pendant that I got in a subscription box like a very, very long time ago. I have no idea where it's from. Then I have the blackthorn ring, which I also got from Hebel Designs. Next, I have this high warlock candle from In the Wick of Time, which is a Magnus-themed candle, and I love it. Next, I have this gorgeous set of postcards that I got from BookCon 2017 as well, and and these have all the characters from the Dark Artifices series, and these are just a few of my favorite ones, but these are so, so pretty. And then the last items I have on this shelf are some more postcards, actually. I got these at one of Cassandra Clare's tour stops during her City of Fallen Angels tour a million years ago, and basically this side just has, like, postcard images from different cities, and then the back side is actually um, letters from the characters to other characters, so the postcards are, like, from the characters 
to the other characters and they're very very cool I love them but now moving on to all the books on this shelf first off I have my three original paperback copies of the first three books in the Mortal Instruments series these are the first three that I originally owned from back when I was in seventh grade and first reading the series next I have my newest edition to this shelf which is the 10th anniversary edition of City of Bones and then under that I have my hardcover copy of City of Bones then I have City of Ashes City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, City of Heavenly Fire, The Bane Chronicles, Lady Midnight, and Lord of Shadows. Moving down to this next shelf here, I have just some completed fantasy series. The only item I have on this shelf is this little hedgehog that one of my friends gave me for Christmas on my birthday, and I just love it, and it's really cute, so it sits here. So first off, I have the Graceling Trilogy by Kristen Cashore. Next, I have the entire Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. And then right next to the Percy Jackson, all stacked up, I'm not gonna pull them out, is the entire Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. Next, I have the Star Touched Queen duology by Roshni Chakshi. Next, I have the Seven Realms series by Cinda Williams Chima. And then lastly on this shelf, I have the three books in the Unbecoming of Mara Dyer trilogy. Moving right along, this next shelf is my first ARC shelf. I like to order my ARCs by publication date, so the earliest one I have here I think is May 2016, and then the most recent one is May 2018. First up, I have The Inquisition by Taryn Mathrew, Deception Island by Bryn Kelly, Die Young With Me by Rob Rufus, Nemesis by Anna Banks, The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon, Heartless by Marissa Meyer, Carval by Stephanie Garber, Our Own Private Universe by Robin Tally, the Valiant by Leslie Livingston, Nemesis by Brendan Reichs, The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Elias Sands, I Found You by Lisa Jewell, The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Good Night Boy by Nikki Sheehan, Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo, All Rights Reserved by Gregory Scott Katsoulis, Things I'm Seeing Without You by Peter Bugnani, A Sampler of The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo, The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding by Alexandra Bracken, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, Release by Patrick Ness, Jane Unlimited by Kristen Cashore, and finally War Cross by Marie Lu. Moving on to the very bottom of this first shelf, we have the remainder of my arcs, starting with One Dark Throne by Kendara Blake, There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins, All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater, Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow, Dear Martin by Nick Stone, 13 Minutes by Sarah Pinborough, Everything Must Go by Jenny Fran Davis, Frankie by Siobhan Peloza, Not Now, Not Ever by Lily Anderson, Witchwood by Tahara Mafi, American Drifter by Heather Graham and Chad Michael Murray, Zenith by Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, The Bells by Danielle Clayton, The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan, and lastly, Furyborn by Claire Legrand. Moving on to my second bookshelf, this is my smaller corner bookshelf. The very first shelf I have on here is my first Harry Potter shelf. I have three Harry Potter shelves. Starting with the items on this shelf, I have this really, really cute Harry Funko Pop where he has Hedwig on his hand and he's wearing his scarf. This is probably my favorite Funko Pop I own. Next, I have this platform nine and three quarters ticket, which I got at the Harry Potter shop in London at King's Cross Station. Next, I have this Deathly Hollows necklace, which is actually my sister's, but I just put it on here because it makes my shelf look nice. And then lastly for the items, I have this quill that I just like putting on top of my books. And then of course the set I have on this shelf is my paperback set where the spines create Hogwarts. I really love these. I'm not going to pull each of them out because it's really hard to get them all out of the box, but I really love the look of the spines. This next shelf, as you can see, is my Night Circus shelf. I have all of my copies of the Night Circus, all five of them, and all my Night Circus themed items on this shelf as well. First I have this little charm bracelet, which is Night Circus themed, that my lovely friend Roxy from the Novel Sanctuary gave to me for my birthday last year. Next I have this Night Circus melting library candle. I have a few of these on my bookshelf actually. And then I just have this little hat that I used for a Halloween costume when I dressed up as Celia Bowen from the Night Circus a couple years ago. Starting off with my first copy of the Night Circus, I have the US hardcover. Next I have this white edition, which I believe is called the Halloween edition. I think it's also a UK edition. If you've seen my Night Circus books before, you know that this is the one with the red pages. I get a lot of questions about where I got this as well as all my other copies. I got most of them from a book, so I'll leave a link to their website site in the description box. Next I have my US paperback of the book and I got this one so that I could annotate it. I got it used from a used bookstore because I wanted to be able to go through and highlight all my favorite quotes. Next we have probably my favorite edition which is the UK hardcover. This one is also out of print like the Halloween edition and this one also has black stained pages that I really really like as well as a ribbon bookmark. It's really really beautiful and one of my most prized possessions. And then lastly I have the new UK paperback which is the Vintage Magic 
Magic Edition, and I really love the cover of this one as well. And then lastly, behind all of my books, I have this gorgeous, gorgeous wall art that one of my friends got me for Christmas this year. It's from Etsy, I believe, and it has the first page of the book in the background and some art cut out in the front, and I treasure this so much. It's so gorgeous. So I just have it behind all of my books right now because I really love the way that it looks. Moving on to the next shelf, this is my second Shadowhunter shelf. Mainly this is my Infernal Devices shelf. First off on this shelf I have this clockwork key that's actually like a pin, and I have no idea where I got this, but it just fits the aesthetic of the book, so I put it here. Next I have my Herondale ring here, which is also from Hebel Design. Next on this shelf is my Clockwork Angel necklace, which again is from Hebel Design, where I got all my other Shadowhunter jewelry, and I love it so dearly. And lastly here I have my Kit Herondale card, which is part of the other postcards that I had on the other shelf, but I just like to keep this one here instead. And then moving on to the books, I of course have Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. And then I have a copy of the Shadowhunters Codex, and lastly Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy. Moving over to this next shelf here, I have my Lee Bardugo shelf. The first item I have on this shelf is just this little magnet pin thing from the Grisha Trilogy. Next I have this Inej playing card that I got during the Crooked Kingdom tour. The next thing I have here is a Funko Pop that my sister actually customized to look kind of like Inej from the series, and I really really love her. This used to be uh, Tauriel. If you saw my last bookshelf tour, I had a Tauriel Funko Pop. This is the same one, but my sister just turned her into Inej. Next on this shelf I have my little Six of Crows dregs bookmarks, and I love them so much. They're so cute. Then lastly on this shelf I have this little letter from Kaz to Inej that I actually got from someone at BookCon, and she has a shop where she does like, I think they're called Letters to My Book Boyfriend, or something like that, and it's just really, really cool, so I just keep it on this shelf. And then moving on to the books on this shelf, I have Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo, The Six of Crows duology, The Grisha Trilogy, which you can see stacked up right there, and lastly, The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. Moving on to this next shelf, this is my Poetry and Plays shelf. First up, I have The Wasteland, Proof Rock, and Other Poems by T.S. Eliot, Ariel by Sylvia Plath, Bone by Ursa Daly Ward, Honey Bee by Naomi Shiab Nye, Said the Shotgun to the Head by Saul Williams, Milk and Honey and the Sun and Her Flowers, both by Rupi Kaur, Love and Misadventure and Lullabies, both by Lang Leave, Love Poems by Pablo Neruda, Lace Bone Beast by N. L. Schompel, Bright Minds and Empty Souls by Janae Cecilia, Stuff I've Been Feeling Lately by Alicia Cook, no Matter the Wreckage and B by Sarah Kay, Secrets for the Mad by Dodie, Twelfth Night and A Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare, and lastly on this shelf I have Sonnets and Poems by William Shakespeare. The bottom shelf of my small shelf is my graphic novel and comic shelf. On top of all the books I have this little bear or cat, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but one of my best friends gave it to me and it's very cute and I love it, so it just sits up there. The first book on this shelf is Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley, Anya's Ghost by Vera Borskul, Persepolis by Marjani Satrapi, The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil by Stephen Collins, Piper by Jay Asher, Jessica Freeberg, and Jeff Stokely, Vincent by Barbara Stoke. Next, I have all of the Saga comics by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples, volumes 1 through 7, and then underneath that, The Encyclopedia of an Early Earth by Isabel Greenberg. I'm not going to pick those up because they won't stand on the shelf and they're too tall. Next on this shelf, I have an Avatar The Last Airbender book. It's the Earth Kingdom Chronicles collection. It's just some short stories from the Earth Kingdom. And then lastly, I have a few of the Avatar The Last Airbender comics. I have the first comics, the Promise Part 1, 2, and 3, and lastly Smoke and Shadow Part 1 and 2. Moving on to this next bookshelf, this top shelf is my second Harry Potter shelf. Starting with the items on this shelf, I have a box of Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans. Next I have this Newt Scamander Funko Pop, and he also has a little picket that goes next to him. Next I have my Bellatrix Funko Pop, which looks like me when I wake up in the morning. And lastly I have my Chocolate Frog box sitting right here as well. Moving on to the books, first up I have this Gryffindor journal that I like keeping on this shelf because it goes with the theme. Next I have have my illustrated edition of the Sorcerer's Stone. I can't stand it up on the shelf because it's too tall. Then I have my 20th anniversary edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Behind all those I have this Hogwarts journal that I got in a subscription box a while ago and it's so so pretty. Then in the center on display I have my copy of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And then right underneath that I have Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. 
And lastly, of course, I have my whole paperback set of the Harry Potter books. I'm not going to pull each one out because, as you've seen, I have another set and I have a third set as well, and you've all seen the Harry Potter books before. Moving down, this next shelf is my third and final Harry Potter shelf. Starting off with the items on this shelf, I have this little chocolate frog box pin, and if you open it up, it actually has a little chocolate frog inside of it, and it smells like chocolate. Next, I have this Gryffindor head girl pin that I got at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Orlando. Then I have my Hermione Yule Ball Funko Pop. She is also one of my favorites. Then the last Harry Potter Funko Pop I have is this one of Harry holding the sword of Godric Gryffindor. And I also have a little mini Dobby that sits behind him. Next, I have my Time Turner necklace in its display case, which is mirrored, so you can actually see my camera in that. Then I also have this little owl statuette, and I have no idea where I got this, but it just goes with the Harry Potter theme, so it sits here. Then sitting on top of my hardback set, I have Newt Scamander's wand. And lastly, I have this little box of some of the Harry Potter pins. It has each of the house crests as well as the Hogwarts crest in it. And then moving on to the books, this time I will pull out each of the Harry Potter books and just show them to you guys since I have three sets and I haven't done it yet. So of course I have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. And lastly on this shelf, I have the remaining two illustrated editions. I have the Chamber of Secrets and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This next shelf is kind of a fantasy series shelf, I guess you could say, and it's mostly some favorites as well as a couple other books that I just thought were pretty and looked nice next to these. As far as items on this shelf, I only have a few. First, I have these little stickers that one of my friends made, actually. She drew some fan art for the Raven Cycle, and she turned them into stickers, and she gave me a few of them. So it has the characters from the Raven Cycle, and I really, really, really love them. They're so cute and pretty, so I just keep them here with my Raven Cycle books. And the only other item I have on this shelf is this Weep Candle, which is Strange the Dreamer themed, and it's super, super pretty and actually glittery inside. So moving on to the books on this shelf, I have All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater, The Whole Raven Cycle Quartet, also by Maggie Stiefvater, The UK and US editions of Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, The Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor, and people always ask me where I got these editions. These are the UK editions and they are out of print, so they don't sell these covers anymore, but I got mine on Abe Books. Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor. The Queen of the Tearling Trilogy by Erica Johansson. And lastly, The Passenger Duology by Alexandra Bracken. So this next shelf here is just another series shelf. They are mostly, apart from Twilight, just completed series. The only thing I have on this shelf is just this little Lord of the Rings pin right here that I keep next to my Lord of the Rings books. First on this shelf, I have The Twilight Saga by Stephanie Meyer, all the books apart from Breaking Dawn. Next, I have Nightlight by the Harvard Lampoon, The Remnant Chronicles Trilogy by Mary E. Pearson, The Bone Season and the Mime Order by Samantha Shannon, The Hunger Games Trilogy by Suzanne Collins. Right next to those I have the Lord of the Rings series as well as The Hobbit, but I'm not going to take them out of the box because they're just very tightly packed. The School for Good and Evil trilogy by Simon Chinani. And lastly on this shelf, I have The Girl from Everywhere and The Ship Beyond Time by Heidi Heilig. So moving right down, this next shelf is my other classics shelf. The only item I have on this shelf is this one Edgar Allan Poe inspired candle. But moving right along to the books, I have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. This next one isn't really a classic, it's just a book that's about Jane Austen, so it's just kind of about her as an author and her books, and I just thought that it worked on this shelf, so I keep it here. Next, I have my super old, very torn up copy of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This was my copy from high school that I read for class and annotated. Next, I have one of my favorite plays, Fuddy Mirrors by David Lindsay Abair. I also have Sophocles' The Three Theban Plays, Antigone the Oedipus the King and Oedipus at Colonus, World Mythology in Bite Sized Chunks, The Complete Plays of William Shakespeare, Moby Dick by Herman Melville, Siddhartha by Herman Hesse, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, A Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, The Razor's Edge by Somerset Moham, Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving, Tess of the Dobervilles by Thomas Hardy. Next, I have six books by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I have A Hundred Years of Solitude, Chronicle of a Death Foretold, Love in the Time of Cholera, News of a Kidnapping, The General in His Labyrinth, and Autumn of the Patriarch. And last Lastly on this shelf, I have four books by Ernest Hemingway, The Sun Also Rises, A Farewell to Arms, For Whom the Bell Tolls, and In Our Time. And finally, moving down to the very bottom shelf on this bookshelf. These are mostly just like children's books and books that I read when I was a kid and just kind of some other miscellaneous stuff mixed in there as well. First, I have book one of the Spiderwick Chronicles by Tony DiTrelizzi and Holly Black. 
Next I have Meet Samantha, which is an American Girl doll book. If anyone else remembers American Girl dolls, I was like obsessed with them when I was a kid. Next I have my copy of Oh the Things You Can Think by Dr. Seuss. This was my favorite Dr. Seuss book. The Last of the Really Great Wang Doodles by Julie Edwards. Next I have this little book called You, which is just a kind of inspirational, motivational book that's just full of like quotes and little positive phrases that says stuff like thoughtful you and like incredible you and stuff like that and it's just really cute and nice. These next books are all too tall to stand up, but I have The Care and Feeding of Sprites, which is a part of the Spiderwick Chronicles. If you couldn't tell, I was really obsessed with the Spiderwick Chronicles as a kid. I also have The Beatrice Letters by Lemony Snicket. This is a companion type of thing to the Series of Unfortunate Events series. Next, I have a pop-up edition of The Little Prince. I have two different copies of the Madeline books, Madeline and Madeline in London. And lastly, I have Arthur Spiderwick's Field Guide to the Fantastical World Around You. This was like my childhood life guide. I lived by this book. And then lastly on the other side I just have one of my purses sitting up there and then I have this book box that's basically just full of nail polish and makeup and a bunch of other random stuff. Onto this next bookshelf. This top shelf here is basically just first books in series. That's kind of what I have and I also have one completed series that's a bind up on here. But most of these books are just first books in series where I don't have any of the other books or the other books aren't out yet. The only item I have on this shelf is this one little candle that just sits on top of my books. Moving on to the books, the one complete series I have on this shelf is this bind up of the His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman, The Glass Spare by Lauren DiStefano, Three Dark Crowns by Kendara Blake, Unwind by Neil Shusterman, Tithe by Holly Black, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, The Hearts We Sold by Emily Lloyd-Jones, Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller, The Takedown by Corey Wang, City of Saints and Thieves by Natalie C. Anderson, The Iron Trial by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare, The Sandcastle Empire by Kayla Olson, The Last Nemesara by Kristen Cicerelli, The Wrath and the Dawn by Rene Atier, The Flame in the Mist by Rene Atier, The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick, and lastly, A Map for Wrecked Girls by Jessica Taylor. Moving right down, this next shelf is my first contemporary shelf. This shelf is essentially all of my favorite contemporaries and mostly the contemporaries that I've read. I think there are only two books on this shelf that I haven't actually read yet, but this is one of my favorite shelves on my whole bookshelf because it's just so pretty and colorful and I love the way all these books look next to each other. First off on this shelf I have Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe and the Inexplicable Logic of My Life, both by Benjamin Elyria Sines. Next I have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, We Are Okay by Nina Liqueur, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky, Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia, Turtles All the Way Down and The Fault in Our Stars, both by John Green, Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, Everything Everything and The Sun is Also a Star, both by Nicole Yoon, History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and The Upside of Unrequited, both by Becky Albertalli, Tash Hearts Tolstoy by Catherine Ornsby. Next, I have two copies of Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, and these aren't contemporary, but I wanted to keep my Rainbow Rowell books all together. And lastly, on this shelf, I have my two remaining Rainbow Rowell books, Fangirl and Eleanor and Park. Onto this next shelf here, I have a shelf that is basically made up of magical YA fantasy novels that are standalones. To my knowledge, all of these books are standalones and all of them are magical in some sort of way or have some sort of fantasy aspect to them. The only item I have on this shelf is just this little umbrella ring holder that has some of my rings in it and I just keep it on there because I think it's cute. But now moving on to the books. I have three books by Anna Marie McLemore. I have The Weight of Feathers, When the Moon Was Ours, and Wild Beauty. We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. Pretty Monsters by Kelly Link. All the Wind in the World by Samantha Mabry. Wicked Like Wildfire by Lana Popovic. The Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthurst. Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody. The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson, Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter, Furthermore and Witchwood by Tahir Amafi, This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee, Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve Tuchulk, The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness, and lastly The Walls Around Us by Nova Ren Suma. This next shelf here is my sci-fi shelf, and all the books on this shelf are sci-fi except for one of them. I also have this little glass hedgehog sitting on this shelf that one of my best friends gave to me, as well as the card game Love Letter. Moving on to the books, I have Radiance by Catherine M. Valente, Defy the Stars by Claudia Gray, Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid, The Terranauts by T.C. Boyle, Airborne and Star Climber by Kenneth Opel, The Martian by Andy Weir, Sleeping Giants by Sylvian Nouvelle, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and a 
Closed in Common Orbit by Becky Chambers, which I just realized were out of order, The Host by Stephanie Meyer, Leia, The Princess of Alderaan by Claudia Gray, and lastly, The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. I like keeping this one next to the Star Wars one because I feel like they work together. And of course, the very last thing on my shelf is just my globe. I get a lot of questions about where I got it. I got it from World Market, but that was a few years ago, so I'm not sure if they still sell it. This next shelf is kind of like a free shelf where I have space when I get some more books, but right now I've just filled it basically with my journals, some pictures, and my copy of The Little Prince. So as you can see, I have some old Polaroids that my sister took for my birthday and on Halloween a couple of years ago. I just like keeping those there. And then in the back, I have one of my copies of The Little Prince, which is one of my favorite books. Then sitting right in front of The Little Prince, I have my little hedgehog, Freckles. If you've been watching my videos for a long time, then you might remember Freckles. She used to sit in the back of every single one of my videos and I used to talk about her a lot more. This was like the first hedgehog toy I ever got. If you couldn't tell from the rest of this bookshelf tour, I really like hedgehogs. I used to collect them when I was younger, so that's why I have a few sitting on my shelves. But Freckles was my first one, and she's my favorite, so I just keep her here because she's special to me. Next, I have another one of those Night Circus melting library candles that I also had on my Night Circus shelf. And then lastly, on the other end, I just have all of my journals. I'm not really going to go through each of them because they're just journals. There's not that much to see, but I like keeping them all together. And finally, onto the very bottom shelf of this next bookshelf, I have some kind of mystery thriller books mainly. For First, I have The Cuckoo's Calling, The Silkworm, and Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling, The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling, S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorst, The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown, American Drifter by Chad Michael Murray and Heather Graham, You by Caroline Kepneys, and lastly, Night Film by Marisha Pessel. And then over on the other side, I basically just have a bunch of my yearbooks, my high school diploma, a coloring book, and then at the very bottom, I have a copy of Hamlet by Shakespeare, and I'm not going to pull it out because it's under a bunch of really heavy books, so I don't want to move it. And finally, we are on to the very, very last bookshelf, and this top shelf here is another shelf of just first books in series, essentially. It's basically just a continuation of the other shelf that I have that's just like this. First, I have Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco, The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness, Delirium by Lauren Oliver, Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, Before She Ignites by Jody Meadows, Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett, Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow, The Girl at Midnight by Melissa Gray, Carval by Stephanie Garber, Roar by Cora Carmack, The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye, Zenith by Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings, Given to the Sea by Mindy McGuinness, Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire, Everless by Sarah Holland, Everland by Wendy Spinelli, Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson, and lastly, Hunted by Megan Spooner. Moving right along to my second contemporary shelf. This is the shelf that houses most of my unread contemporary books. There are actually only two on this shelf that I have read. As far as the items on this shelf go, first I have this little pin that says Open Books, Open Minds, Open Hearts from City Lights Bookstore in San Francisco. Next I have The Last Hedgehog on any of my shelves. This one just sits on top of all the books, and like all the others, I love it very much. <laughs> and lastly, sitting on top of all of my books, is this box that my best friend made for me back when we were, I think, in sixth or seventh grade, a very long time ago, and it just has some of my sentimental items that she gave to me throughout the years in it. Moving right along to the books, I have Looking for Alaska by John Green, This Song Will Save Your Life by Layla Sales, The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, He Forgot to Say Goodbye by Benjamin Elias Sands, 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher, First and Then and Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills, 10 Things I Can See From Here by Carrie Mack, I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson, Golden Boy by Abigail Tartlin, In Perfect Light by Benjamin Elias Sands, The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr, Love, Life, and the List by Casey West, I Hate Everyone But You by Gabby Dunn and Alison Raskin, Everything All at Once by Katrina Leno, The Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness, Kids of Appetite by David Arnold, The Outsiders by S. E. Hinton, and lastly, American Street by E. B. Zaboy. Moving along on this next shelf, I have another shelf of basically just fantasy magical books. For the most part, they're all standalones. First up on this shelf, I have this little tiny figurine of Totoro with the leaf umbrella, and I love it a lot, so I just put it on top of my book because it's really cute. And then the only other thing I have on this shelf is my Pocahontas Funko Pop, which I love very, very much. Moving on to the books, I have Carnivalesque by Neil Jordan, The Gollum and the Ginny by Helene Wecker, Tender Morsels by Margot Lanigan, The Bear and the Nightingale by Katherine Arden, The River of No Return by B. Ridgway, The Muse by Jesse Burton, The Grace Keepers by Christy Logan, Uprooted by Naomi Novik, The Enchanted by Renee Denfeld, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, She Rises by Kate Worsley, 
A Monster Calls, The Crane Wife, and More Than This, all by Patrick Ness, The Museum of Extraordinary Things by Alice Hoffman, The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley, and lastly, All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders. Moving on down, this next shelf is probably my most mismatched shelf. This one is kind of a continuation of the previous shelf, and it also has a couple of like adult fiction and a couple YA historical fictions on it, and yeah, I didn't really know how else to organize it, but it kind of works and I know where everything is, so that's good enough for me. Starting with the items, I have this cotton candy scented candle that smells really, really good. And then sitting on top of that, I just have this little branch of a fake flower because I thought it was cute. And then moving on to the books, I have Slade House by David Mitchell, The Ocean at the End of the Lane and Coraline by Neil Gaiman, Alias Hook by Lisa Jensen, The Swan Gondola by Timothy Shaffert, The Humans by Matt Haig, Hear the Wind Sing and Pinball 1973 by Murakami, What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours, and Boy Snowbird by Helen Oyemi, My Grandmother Asked Me To Tell You She's Sorry and A Man Called Owe by Frederick Bachman, The Kingdom of Little Wounds by Susan Kokel, Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple. Next, I just have my art journal sitting on top of my books here because I thought that it looked nice. Underneath that, I have Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay, A Word For Love by Emily Robbins, Snow Falling by Jane Gloriana Villanueva, aka the book that Jane writes in Jane the Virgin, Yes, they did publish it as a real book. <laughs> now we're moving into my YA historical fictions, starting with The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee, That Inevitable Victorian Thing by E.K. Johnston, and lastly on the shelf I have Nora and Kettle by Lauren Nicole Taylor. And moving right down, we have a continuation from my YA historical fiction into the rest of my historical fiction. The first item I have on this shelf is this jewelry box that my grandfather gave me, and the only other item I have is this Maleficent candle, which I use as a book end. And moving into the books, I have A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara, Burial Rites by Hannah Kent, To Capture What We Cannot Keep by Beatrice Collin, The Buried Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro, Gretel in the Dark by Eliza Granville, The Shadow of the Wind, The Angel's Game, and The Prisoner of Heaven, all by Carlos Ruiz Zefon, The Comet Seekers by Helen Sedgwick, The Silver Witch by Paula Braxton, The Fortune Hunter by Daisy Goodwin, Homegoing by Yaw Jossi, Atonement by Ian McEwen, The Kite Runner by Khalid Husseini, No One Is Here Except All of Us by Ramona Azabel, I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith, and lastly, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dorr. And finally, we are on to the very, very last shelf of all of my bookshelves. And this bottom shelf basically just houses all of my feminist lit books. So I have some nonfiction books, and then I have some fiction books as well. It's just a mix of a bunch of different stuff. And then on the other side, I just have my Harry Potter box that all my hardcover set came in, and then that box is just full of some like papers and journals and stuff. But moving on to the books, I have three books by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I have We Should All Be Feminists, The Thing Around Your Neck, and The Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions, Woman at Point Zero by Nawal El Sadawi, Sula by Toni Morrison, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, All About Love and Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Hooks, I'm Down by Mishna Wolf, The War Against Women by Marilyn French, No Turning Back, The History of Feminism and the Future of Women by Estelle B. Friedman, Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Susan, The Language of Gender by Mary Talbot. This is actually like a textbook that I had for one of my classes, but I liked it a lot, so I just kept it. The Other 50% Multicultural Perspectives on Gender Relations, Punished, Policing the Lives of Black and Latino Boys by Victor M. Rios, The Color of Violence, an Insight Anthology, Girls' Studies by Ellen Lipkin, Feminism and Pop Culture by Andy Ziesler, Pro Reclaiming Abortion Rights by Katha Pollitt, and the very last book, Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt by Chris Hedges and Joe Zacco. All right, guys, so that is it for my 2018 bookshelf tour. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. If you stayed around for the entire thing, props to you. I'm sure that this video is going to be extremely long, and I can't believe that you actually watched the entire thing, but thank you, it means a lot to me. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always, but thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!